I'll I'll start off with with the most common one I'm seeing uh, these days. Uh, it's it's migrations, right? While you know when you're moving off off uh, on-prem technologies onto the cloud, especially when you're doing those kind of migrations, what what used to happen is people used to write normal converters, and the converters etc. used to take a lot of time to build and then do the conversions. Now with you know uh, generative AI coming in, can we think of a world where we can generate the cloud mappings, can we think of a world where we can do schema migrations, we can move data independently just using AI? So that is what, what in, in my mind, is an extremely good candidate. Wow, that's a, that's a great one. Uh, Barzan, what's, what, what, would you, what would you add to the list? I think the way I look at sort of what's right for AI or ML, I usually ask myself two questions, like what can be automated and what needs to be automated, right? Whatever you have the intersection of need and potential, I think that's how I sort of define drive. So if I go by that definition, I would, the top of my list would be anything related to cloud data warehousing, right? Like if you think about it, what cloud, you know, companies like Snowflake and products like BigQuery or Redshift, what they've done is that they've really lowered the adoption barrier. So now you have a lot more users, a lot more applications who can tap into, you know, into data and, and try to glean insight. But what that means is that now you know, data pipelines are significantly more complex. So anything related to optimizing your cloud data warehouse, optimizing your queries, optimizing your data pipelines, uh, with that definition, it's something that absolutely needs to get automated. You can't manually, op you know, automate tens of millions of queries throughout, you know, 24 seven, but also something that the technology is absolutely able to sort of do today. So that would be the top of my list. In a word, optimizing around the cloud warehouse. Great. Um, uh, Prashant, what would you uh, add? Yeah, so uh, building on what uh, Bazan and um, Arnab just said, so I look at data engineering into three major processes. One is on data integration, which, uh, which of course is based on data pipelines. Number two is on data wrangling, which is on work on improving the quality of the data which you already have. And third one is on data enrichment. So um, I believe we'll have more questions on these three areas. So overall, I see the use cases for data engineering through AI could be on these three areas. Integration of data into your canonical system. Number two, wrangling of the data to improve the quality of the data which you already have. Uh, number three is, um, is on data enrichment where you can get new sources of data, both columns as well as, as, well as rows, and augment the data which you already have. Wow, we're on a roll. How about you, Clinton? Yeah, the three big areas we're seeing um, when it comes to data engineering are really around cost, quality, and performance. So data engineering problems related to these barriers to um, driving AI strategy are things like cloud cost management and data FinOps. These have become priorities due to the variable cost model of the cloud. So one of the things we hear is that uh, cloud data spending is increasing, it has become the largest uh, single and fastest growing workload segment on the cloud. The others around operations and troubleshooting as, as has been mentioned, uh, just because of the complexity of these data pipelines and all the integrated aspects. And then thirdly, around data pipeline and application optimization to achieve the performance and hit the SLAs that teams require. Sue, so, what would you add? Well, I think they've covered most of it, but the only thing that I would add is from a practical use case purpose, it's about data augmentation also, which probably is hidden in any one of those um, uh, attributes or key points that others here made. But I think what I'm getting to is, you know, when you're talking about data quality, it's easy to say, hey, but people are drowning in the kinds of data, the missing data, the transparency of the data, all of that, right? Which we hope that AI, Gen AI would catch. But we also have to think about how we are training the, mo the, the models as well. So I know we're going to get to that. But for me, that's one of the things other than the schema that I think someone already here mentioned. I think Arnold mentioned that. That is also part of it because not everybody also has, by the way, metadata management. So while people are going from on-prem to the cloud, we make an assumption that many of these companies actually know about data management, data governance, and metadata management, which is not necessarily true. So before we even get to the data engineering workload, we have to understand, that's why I said, if 
tied to the business outcomes, which I think Clinton mentioned cost quality performance, right? Those are the kinds of language and verbiage that most people understand. And then tying it to those specific use cases, agnostic of course, the platform, the AI tool, or the industry that we're in. Wow, that's a really powerful set. Let's review migrations, cloud warehousing, optimization, queries, pipelines, um, data integrity, our data integration, data wrangling, data enrichment, quality, cost, performance, particularly in the cloud environment where the costs are, are, are variable, and then data augmentation, getting the data fit for use. <laughs>